everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of the Cream Podcast, episode 34. This is the ode to the greatest athlete of all time, Bo Jackson, number 34 for the LA Raiders. Bo knows, Bo knows podcasting, I guess. Uh, episode number 34. Thanks so much, everyone, for following, liking, subscribing, and sharing the podcast. We got a lot of great things today, Jason. So let's dive right in. All right, Jason, now on episode number 34 here of the Cream Podcast, we're going to talk about a topic that we've covered a lot over the last couple of years, and that's inflation. But now there's some real signs that inflation is cooling. The latest CPI is only about 3% year to year, which is close to the Fed's target of 2% annual inflation. However, a lot of people are saying it's false hope. What's your opinion on inflation these days? Right now, we are seeing inflation is down right now. We see it across the board. Right now, gasoline is down uh, 26%, a little bit uh, more than that, year over year. Um, heating, energy is down. The issue we're going to have, or you know, I won't say we're out of, the, out of the dark yet. The problem with inflation is you never know it's going to roar up back again. That's why the feds are talking about they're going to raise rates again at the end of this month um, and possibly one more time this year. Because if you look at inflation in the 60s or the late 60s, the 70s, that whole period of uh, last time we had inflation, it looked like inflation was under control again, then roared back up higher than it was before. We're just hoping that it's not like that. And that's why we've seen the Fed be so aggressive. But right now, inflation really does look good compared to last year, where it was like over 9% inflation. So it looks like we're doing better. We're just not sure we're out of the woods yet. So I won't put up the victory flag for it. Yeah, I think that's a great way to characterize it. We're not out of the woods yet. And we do have a lot of momentum, you know, annual inflation, CPI, everything, all the barometers are coming down month to month. But there are still some sectors that are really sticky, like energy, like housing. And so uh, the Fed wants to make sure to do it right and uh, get it done with. So look for another Fed interest rate increase end of this month. And like Jason said, uh, possibly another one in the rest of 2023. All right, Jason, now in the Cream Podcast, we're going to talk about Wall Street, the stock market. And we've had some good news lately in the stock market, but investors and consumers still need to be pretty careful, huh? They need to be careful, but right now the stock market this year is hot, hot, hot compared to what we saw just uh, last year where the market was down 25%. The equities has been really, really hot. We see, especially right now in the NASDAQ, is the hottest at the three major indexes. But that's primarily due to AI, as is the hot, sexiest thing on the market right now. Uh, but the market is resilient, just like it seems like our economy has been resilient for all these years. But it's been a huge bounce back right now. As S&P 500, as of last month, was up 24% uh, so far from its bottom last October 12th of last year. So these are really good numbers. The market's doing great. Interest rates are rising, which is uh, is a good thing for our older clients who are more conservative, where they still have money in the market, but their 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 safe fixed income assets are doing a lot better than they they've been able to get uh, for the last thirteen years. That's a great that's a great point. Yeah, there's always someone that benefits, right? And yeah, like you said, we've entered a bull market. Um, AI and tech is hot. Um, people definitely need to still be careful and uh, look at the downside, look at risk, look at their portfolio, diversify and come to you for some advice. Right. And we know the big thing as well with it is you're seeing value stocks are doing a lot better than growth stocks, which was hmm. different than what we saw in 2020, 2020 or 2020 in the second half of the year, 2021, is that now instead of growth stocks to being the hot sexy thing that's um, pushing up the market, overall, the market is doing the best is this value stocks. Hmm. Very interesting. Awesome. Yeah. Well, people definitely should give you a call, um, talk about their portfolios, their strategy, and make sure that they're aligned for the stock market run that we're seeing. All right, Jason, now on the Cream Podcast, we're going to talk about financial education. And it's summertime. And when kids leave school for the summer, there's something called uh, brain drain. Is that what it's called? Where they they forget a whole a learning lapse or something like that, where they forget a lot of what they learned the previous school year. So we want to encourage people, even though it's summertime, to still do a lot of financial education, read books, podcasts, 
watch videos, go to credible sources, and keep learning about money matters. So what are some of your favorite places for financial education? Yeah, for financial education, I'm a big time reader in the morning. That's usually how I like to start my day off. Um, and there's a couple of books I recommend for adults to do it, which is mm -hmm. one, um, The Intelligent Investor. Warren Buffett swears by that book. I think everybody should read that book. Uh, number two, The Psychology of Money, which is huge. As well, I love, I love that one too, man. That one's incredible, right? Right, because so much people come to the office and think everything's about numbers, but really is about our feelings mm. and our thoughts about money. Uh, and so part of when we do our planning process, we have what we call our money and values uh, conversation, which is connected to like this book, because when you have money and no values, you just splurge to spend the money, the money that you have. And if you have values and no money, those values get thrown out the windows because you just try to eat. So you want to do anything for it. But when you can put money and values put together, that's when the beauty of and great things happen in this world. And the psychology of money talks about that greatly. And then a really good book I recommend for kids, and I have my son read it once, one probably have him read, him, read it again this summer, um, is The Richest Man in Babylon. I think that's mm. the book anybody who has some money should read. It might give you not give you the details of investing in stocks or bonds, but it should tell you how to use and handle your money correctly. Mm. Especially right now where you have so many internet gurus with the most hottest and sexiest things out there and people are getting burnt. But if they read the or read or read a book, The Richest Man of Babylon, they would not be making the same mistakes. Uh, and I'm seeing people do more and more mistakes that could have been avoided by really handling their money a lot better than what they actually do. Mm. Follow that Taken to, to your points of the last two. A lot of people, it's, it's you know, numbers and it, yes, but it's not guessing right. It's not gambling. It's not knowing what's going to hit before everyone else. There's really tried and true principles, you know, with, with planning, starting early, compounding, uh, investing automatically, diverse, you know, all these things are tried and true that you're going to win, but you have to remove your ego. You have to remove your, you know, your lack of discipline, your emotion, your fear, greed from it. And that's why, of course, a financial planner helps so much, but that's where people lose out again and again and again. Um, and, and basically your job also is keeping them from hurting them themselves financially, huh? They're, that's the most important is hurting people, not hurting themselves. We see people over and over hurt themselves just because they're not thinking about the long term. They're just living for today or doing something that's very hot and sexy and people are just impatient. So oftentimes, yeah. most of the time is me, we're hurting ourselves oftentimes on things that can be avoided. Absolutely. And you also mentioned um, your kids and the richest man in Babylon, which is a great book too. A lot of people started the journey, I think in the nineties or something with like uh, rich dad, poor dad, which is, you know, real estate advice. And it, it attracted a lot of people, you know, there's some big holes in that, but richest man in Babylon is probably more foundational for investment advice, but what are some sources for kids for financial education? When is it appropriate to start teaching your kids? And how do you guys, you and Savannah, handle it with your kids? Yeah, I think one thing you start your kids off when you first give them money. So it really starts at four years old, just like he you teach your kids how to brush your teeth. Um, you have to teach your kids about money early on. So if you just give your kid, here's some money and just spend it, you already teach your kid to be a vendor and a consumer you're not teaching them how to invest early on um so the best thing is when you give your, your child some money have them get allowance is make sure you automatically start showing them how to uh, put that money away you might not have them buy stocks early on but you got them all in the pattern of automatically hey i get ten dollars i'm going to put two dollars away in my savings and now you already that you're building that good that really really good habit and then as they get older and they start under they start liking certain things like they might start liking shoes or video games. That's when you start implementing about stocks or bonds, those type of companies, how to research those companies slowly. Mm. So they start making it more. That's a great that. point. That's a great point. Instead of saying, this is the real world. And, you know, you like shoes, you like cars, you like music, you like all these things. Um, but on this other side, there's an abstract world of investments and companies and stocks and bonds actually combine the two and say, okay, you, you love Nikes. Well, did you know there's a stock that you could buy or invest in these products, right? Or you use an Apple computer did, or an iPhone. Did you know you could invest in that? That's a fantastic way to sort of bridge those two worlds. Yeah. Cause once they do that, then 
they'll start looking at the, just the world differently and they start noticing mm-hmm. what their friends are doing and it makes them excited about money because it's like, oh, I can make money off of just paying attention to what's mm-hmm. around me. So that's how you should really get started. But if you all you're doing is giving your kids money and telling them, hey, buy something from the store with this money, all you're doing is building a consumer. And then when we when we get mad because our kids don't save, a lot of that is a reflection of what we taught them early on that you, you make money to spend, but not make money to invest it to do other different things. That's fantastic. Yeah. And of course, if people, anyone has questions, but even questions about where they should go for financial education um, or for their kids, you're happy to talk to them and set them up. And uh, I know on you're big on offering education and value to people on the blog, on the website, on YouTube, um, you know, emails, everything. So definitely they should follow this channel, but also your, your website, mfis.biz. All right, Jason, now on the Cream Podcast, you're going to talk about something pretty practical, which is checking in at least twice a year with you or the financial planner to review financial goals, their investments, their strategy and stuff like that. Tell us why it's so important to have a, a not only a checkup or a financial checkup or set that strategy in the first of the year when everyone does it, but also the middle part of the year around now. Yeah, the importance of doing it is because you want to make sure that you're staying on track with your goals and objectives you're trying to accomplish, right? Because in the beginning of the year, we're super hot, we're super excited about the year coming on, but we actually don't know how the world, how the how the year is going for us. For us, the market, the market could be drastically up or drastically down. We might need to rebalance our portfolio. We should also look at our goals, and if we're a business owner, maybe we're making a certain amount of income, and we need to do some tax strategies to reduce that taxable income for ourselves. So earlier on, instead of waiting till March 2024 or the right before we file our taxes. Um, so those are a huge reasons why. But also our goals change, right? We go into mm-hmm. January thinking, hey, our goals is I want to buy this or I want to do this. And we might we go through these changes is, uh, that might be a little bit different. So it's always good to do a semi-annual checkup just to see where you are at and we'll see you make those little gaps or adjustments that make you really good, you know, right? During halftime, that's when the best coaches make adjustments. Look at Steve Kerr with the Warriors. One thing about the Warriors is they're one of the best third quarter teams because they make adjustments. And this is the same thing when we look at you and your financial plan. What adjustments do you need to make during the halftime of the year? That's a great point. Yeah, and a lot of things change, not only with the markets, the economy, but with like new tax regulations, new limits on, you know, spending, saving all these different plans and stuff for the next year. So you go to the doctor a couple times a year, you probably check in with your CPA more than once a year, you go to the dentist, hopefully twice a year, you should definitely check in with your financial planner. And you're right now, you mentioned before we uh, started filming this, that you're scheduling semi-annual consultations with clients now, huh? Correct. So we are definitely scheduling semi-annual consultations now. Uh, during the summertime, I know a lot of times people are coming back from vacation, um, but this is a great time coming back from vacation just to see where you're at with your savings. See, we blew too much money during that vacation trip that you took with the family and, and to make those adjustments, especially laws are drastically changing step by step. There's mm. long and delayed or extended. Perfect example is there's just been a new IRS ruling on RMDs that just happened. So mm. if you're, which is, if you're over the age of 72, RMD stands for required minimum distributions. And you're supposed to take out a certain percentage of your out of your retirement accounts, you got to take it out and put it and take it as income. Well, there's just been a new ruling about that and adjustment. So if you're over that age, you should definitely look and follow those adjustments. And that's just one perfect example of that. Hmm, great information. All right. And to go ahead and schedule a semi-annual consultation with you, um, where should they go? Give us some contact number. Yeah, you can definitely give us a call at our office, 510-228-3268, or go to our website, mfis.biz. Perfect. All right, everyone, get on the calendar. Uh, Jason's a busy man, but that's because he provides a ton of value, helps people grow their assets. So definitely check in with them mid part of the year, not just the first of the year. Harder plays defense like us at the 24 hour fitness right now. When we shoot oh, this man. three and right in the quarter, we stay out of the half court line. We're like the old guy at the gym, but. Oh my God. Hey, how about uh, my, my Celtics with Perzingis? What do you think about that? That's a good pick. That's definitely a good pick. The question, are you guys going to get game dollars? Is the question. I don't think so. I, I hope not. But. Um, you don't think yeah, we, good, huh? we still got, got some big, with you. We still got some big holes in our team, but. 
you just got to look at Marcus Smart and the first round pick for Perzingis, and it's That's not a, a max, and it's not a max contract. Like it's only ten mil. We're only paying about ten million more for Perzingis than we were for Smart. Right. He was like twenty million. So. Yeah, smart. You got to stay healthy, though. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, smart was great on defense and stuff like that, but he thought he was part of the big three, and he was jacking threes, and he would like, you know, I don't know. But I still think we need some help. But it should be that's tough to guard when you got Brown, Tatum, um, you know, Derek White's great, Malcolm Brogdon, and Porzingis. That should be pretty fun to watch, huh? That will be fun. Marcus Smart was supposed to play the role of Tony Allen. Mm. and stayed in that as a defensive specialist and got out of that. Because that's what yeah. Tony Allen won with three guys before he went to the Grizzlies. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he was very valuable and stuff, but I think, uh, I don't know, they're going to definitely miss him. But Przingis, that ceiling is higher, right? We we didn't win a championship, you know, with Smart, Tatum, Brown, two years in a row. So they had to do something, right? You like your head coach? No. I don't like him, but I, I think he deserves a longer – like, he didn't have a preseason last year. It was, right. like, two days before, and he didn't have his own assistant coaches, and he wasn't able to implement and practices his system. So you got to give him – I mean, he, he did a – you know, I don't know, but he's sort of an asshole. He's sort of, like – he acts like he's better than the media. I hate how he responds to the media and stuff, but – I think you got to give him a full season to prove himself, you know? Very true. I wouldn't say fire him. I'm just not so. No, no, no. Yeah. But I, so far I'm not, in, you know, Jack, a bunch of threes. That's not, he's not a genius for coming up with that. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> but we'll you, see. We'll see. No, the question is, is your old Boston coach a genius, even though he's going to the Rockets now? He's, he's a genius at motivating players. When it came down to the X's and O's, I don't, I th- I don't think he would have had any special advantage over anyone. Um, yeah. But you know, so much of the NBA too, it's not on paper, but it's getting managing these egos and getting everyone facing the same direction with a goal. And, you know, and so I think, and, and as a former player, he would be able to hold these guys accountable, you know, and Missoula can't do that. He can't have the same conversation. So I think Adoka is perfect for Houston because young players, they don't, there's no pressure. He could just build them up the right way, the right habits, the right work ethic. But I don't think he's some, you know, genius championship coach or something like that. Yeah. There's only a couple of champ- genius coaches out there in the NBA. Anyway, it's probably like three or four. How about, how about CP3 and the Warriors? What do you think about that? Hate that. <laughs> I hate that. And you guys I, gave I up, you guys gave up some pretty like important pieces too, huh? Yeah, I, I want to get rid of Jordan Poole. Can't stay him. He didn't fit into the culture. It was right. Uh, but not for his CP. I never did like CP3. Yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, I can't I stand mean, him. So CP3, like, he's got to have the ball. Curry's got to have the ball. I know, of course, Curry could score coming off screens and this and that. But I don't know. I think it's going to change the dynamic of the team. And like, CP3 is a control freak. You know, uh, I don't know. It might be a little bit of my turn, your turn, which takes away from the genius of the Warriors, right? Everyone passing, everyone moving like one organism. Yeah. So it's almost like almost like taking the ball out of Draymond Green's hands as that offensive coordinator and giving it to – and CP3, he uh, he's old. He's going to get injured. I don't know. We need a big man. That's what we were supposed to trade for, a big. Mm. I wanted to get the Lopez – when the Lopez brothers, but then he just oh, you guys would have been a, with Brooke Lopez. Oh, forget about it. You guys would have been insane. Yeah, that's how we. Should, that's what we should have got. Well, we'll see, man. We'll see. All right, Jason. Now in the Cream Podcast, you're going to give us a quick update on something coming soon in 2024. So, what is that? Yes. So. Oftentimes, people have these 529 plans that they might get for their grandkids or for their kids, and they simply don't use all the funds. So people have been scratching their heads trying to figure out what to do with those funds. Well, due to the Secure Act 2.0 that was signed uh, last year, uh, starting in 2024, you could convert that 529 plan 
that was really originally designed for higher education uh, or even now private schools. And now you can be able to convert it over to a Roth IRA. The benefit of doing that for a lot of people is, hey, this money already been growing tax deferred. The money was growing, was supposed to be taken out tax free before higher education. But now that's money can be taken out tax free for you now since it's becoming a Roth IRA. So it's a great vehicle for any money you might have left over in a 529 plan. Or oftentimes people are reluctant to even put money in the 529 plan because they don't think they're, they're not sure their kids will go to college or not. So this is a great avenue now for people to open up their eyes and put money in the 529 plan. Awesome. Great information. And that starts that change in 2024. So people should contact you now uh, if they need some help or have questions, huh? Yes, sir. Jason, now on the Cream Podcast, you're going to give your shout out of the episode. So what do you got for us? Yeah, shout out at, the shout out of the day is make sure, especially when you have business partners, we always have these great sexy ideas on with our businesses and, and joining a partnership with our friends. Oftentimes it might be over a cocktail or you love what your friend is doing and you want to partner up. When you partner up, make sure you have everything you're writing and you have an agreement for all the unforeseen things. Oftentimes when we do this, it's very romantic stage where we think everything will always go fine and dandy. But yet we're investing a lot of our time and money and things do happen in life, such as sickness, death, divorce, other persons having other having financial uh, ob financial uh, obligations or tragedies. So in, during that period of time, make sure you have everything written out, have a proper business uh, buy sell agreement with each other and mm. proper agreements and make it properly funded. That is actually the financial tip of the day. Mm, that's a great tip. And you're exactly right. So many people are caught up in the energy, the enthusiasm, their vision to start the company is super aligned, but how they're going to grow it, what they're going to put into it and how to sell it. So many business owners in general just don't have an exit strategy, right? Yeah. And that's when everything falls apart. So we don't want another mini series like Succession on HBO, right? <laughs> everyone, everyone <laughs> fighting, everyone fighting for uh, what's left. So definitely that's great show, by the way. Great show, but yeah. you don't want that to happen in real life. So make sure everything is clear in writing from the very beginning so you can re reduce the drama that we see on HBO. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Jason. Everybody, once again, thank you for listening to episode 34 of the Cream Podcast. If you like this podcast, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends, your family, and your community. Once again, Thank you for listening to the Cash Rules Everything Around Me podcast. Cream, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Everyone, Cash Rules Everything Around Me podcast number 34, and we'll see you next month. Take care.